enable the power. We stand for integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'm your host this hour. Glad that you're able to join us. Appreciate your attendance with us this morning. <clears throat> On the docket for today, we really have one issue, and that is Benghazi. Although America has been told that Benghazi doesn't matter, that it was a long time ago, it does matter, and it wasn't that long ago. The State Department, Hillary Clinton, President Obama, Jay, Jay Carney, the man with no credibility, they've been hiding behind stall, stalling tactics, penalization of whistleblowers. I mean, how is it that we need protection from the federal government for whistleblowers. I find that amazing. So essentially, in order for people to come out and speak out about what's actually occurred, they need protection from the government. That's scary, folks. I've been telling you that Benghazi was really about arms deals. That the mission in Benghazi was not just an issue of snafu'd foreign policy. And now it appears that the truth may out. Under a PJM Media exclusive, two ex-diplomats are reporting that there are new Benghazi whistleblowers with information that will be devastating to both Hillary and our tyrant-in-chief. And they will emerge shortly in the escalating scandal. However, they are securing legal counsel because they work in areas that are not fully protected by whistleblower law. That, ladies and gentlemen, is shameful and embarrassing. Here we have a nation which is supposed to stand for the rule of law, but these two gentlemen are afraid to come out and speak about quite honestly, what may amount to treason because they're afraid. According to the two diplomats who are, everyone's of course remaining undercover here, what these whistleblowers have to say is so explosive, including additional details about what really transpired in Benghazi, that They're afraid to come out and speak. That what Ambassador Stevens was really doing in Benghazi and that the pressure that was put on General Carter Ham, who was at the time in command of uh, AFRICOM, that's the U.S. Africa Command, was really all about a buyback of Stinger missiles from an Al-Qaeda group that was issued to them by the State Department itself. Now, folks, for the record, when you're talking about 
when you're talking about the State Department allowing Stinger missiles into the hands of Al-Qaeda, our alleged enemy, declared under the War on Terror, and then attempting to buy them back Ladies and gentlemen, that qualifies as an act of treason, a betrayal of your own nation, a betrayal of your trust in office, a betrayal because you have abused the authority which you have been delegated to such a grievous extent that no other word, no other definition will suffice. I pray that the individuals who really truly understand and know what went down in Benghazi <clears throat> are confident enough to come out and speak, irrespective of the danger to themselves physically and their careers. And I say that because America needs the truth. We don't need the truth because we're curious as cats, we need the truth because we need to expose what these two have done so that America can fully understand the depth of the depravity of this administration and Hillary Clinton specifically. She is a horrific unconscionable excuse for a human being. She always has been and always will be. And I would like nothing more than to see her go down in the annals of history as a traitor, labeled for what she is. <clears throat> Hillary is the type of person that will stop at nothing to achieve whatever her ends and her goals are. They're always political, and they always involve greater power. She is a power-hungry animal, and she has slaked her thirst and her hunger on America long enough. It's time for her to go. It's time for her to leave the political arena permanently, her and her husband. These individuals are, are guilty of so many crimes against humanity, so many crimes against the United States of America, that nothing that we could do to legally punish them would be sufficient. She wanted, according to this article, she wanted to proceed with this buyback of Stinger missiles from Al-Qaeda, which the State Department had issued to them, not the CIA, but the State Department itself. Now, that type of a project would never be ordinarily handled by the State Department. But Hillary, because she's gotten away with so much for so long, she feels that she's bulletproof, the Teflon queen. That type of a project or a mission would almost exclusively always in the past have been handled by the CIA. The fact that that type of a mission can actually occur in the first place is a whole different topic. I don't care who puts the deal together. That, ladies and gentlemen, is treason. The dogs of war, a.k.a. the CIA... are always embroiled up to their elbows in black alligators. <clears throat> but, the intelligence, but the intelligence side of the government was opposed to this idea because of the high risk involved in arming insurgents with powerful weapons that could endanger not only military aircraft, but civilian aircraft. And let's face it, we don't have any concerns about whether or not Al-Qaeda may use a Stinger missile against civilian aircraft, or do we?
I mean, come on. Were they or were they not responsible for 9-11? We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to really dig in depth into the depravity of what we're doing here. Because I think if America ever really truly understood, they'd be shocked. We'll be back in just a moment. Even with all of this going on, the beach is closer than you think. Pacific Beach Tanning and Fitness is open, and now's the time to take advantage of their construction special. Pacific Beach is offering 20% off all tanning packages, gym memberships, and lotions. There's plenty of parking in the back, so don't let a little street construction keep you from the beach. Pacific Beach Tanning and Fitness, 110 Trish Knight Street in West Plains. I had this illness that really made me powerless over alcohol and that insisted that I got drunk. And so I got drunk. It doesn't have anything to do with trying to control it. An alcoholic who picks up the first drink will pick up the second drink. I can't say to anyone, no, 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 don't drink. But I can say that when you decide you don't want to drink, come to AA. The door to AA is always open. Alcoholics Anonymous. It works. Look us up. Check your phone book, newspaper, or AA.org. One of these diplomats that was being interviewed for this story actually came out and his quote was that Hillary wanted to overthrow Gaddafi on the cheap. And they wanted to use these stinger missiles to accomplish that end. If you recall, Gaddafi was pummeling <clears throat> the rebels, Al-Qaeda rebels, um, with military aircraft. And the... Uh, Rebels were outgunned, outmanned, outmaneuvered, outarmed. Take your pick. And they wanted these Stinger missiles because, well, it evens the odds. Now, you know, Gaddafi has always been a uh, best loved pariah to the United States of America. We often have held him up as a symbol of uh, all that's wrong with dictatorships. And the United States government, you know, long held him out to be the poster boy for terrorism, but used him when it was convenient. That type of diplomacy... That type of national policy, that's what really has the entire hornet's nest of the Middle East angry with us. Not to mention the rest of the Western world, the rest of the Third World, the rest of South America, the rest of Asia. You see, our inconsistencies and our lying, conniving, scheming, plotting, dogs of war mentality is not lost on these foreign nations. They know exactly who we are. They don't know us. They don't know you. They don't know the American people. They don't know that we long for the freedom and the liberty and the honesty and in the integrity that our nation was founded and built upon. They only know what they see. A government completely and totally run amok with an enormous amount of muscle, power, arms, armaments, and an army at their behest that can frankly trounce almost any nation into dust. What they see is a group of diplomats, bureaucrats, double-talking carpetbaggers, constantly, imperialistically beating on other countries for oil, 
for natural resources, for political gains that only fit that particular administration that may currently be in or in some overall effort across multiple administrations to drive them towards globalism. And they don't want it. Trust me, the world doesn't want globalism any more than we do. We don't want it. They don't want it. The only people who want it are those who will gain by its implementation. They resist. They get trammeled. They resist some more. They're labeled terrorists. I'm not excusing their actions. I'm just saying that at some point, we have to recognize that the United States of America is a bully. And when you see deals like this, where the Department of State, which is supposed to be a diplomatic service, not some covert black ops or organization and operation, what the hell is that about? I mean, apparently Hillary Clinton's been watching way too many spy movies. How dare the State Department try to get involved in a deal to smuggle arms into, into a foreign nation, first of all. Secondly, to a foreign nation that is controlled by our enemy. I mean, what the hell is this about? And then, Sack and Stevens with the, op, with the option to, or not the option, but the only responsibility the guy had left, go and clean up the mess. When it became clear that these insurgents that Hillary wanted to sponsor and support with these stingers were obviously Al-Qaeda operatives. She sent Stevens in there to do her dirty work. Now, I'm not giving Stevens a pass here. He knew darn well what he was going into. He knew darn well that he was walking into the hornet's nest. And he knew that he was walking into the hornet's nest covered in pheromones. But the group that attacked and killed him was the same group that Hillary was trying to scam. This di diplomat who came out and spoke with uh, uh, PJM characterized this entire thing as so amateurish that he likened it to an old film called Charlie Wilson's War that was about a clueless congressman who supplied Stinger missiles to the Afghan guerrillas. Here's his quote. It's as if Hillary and the others just watched that movie and said, hey, let's do that. End quote. He also added that he and his colleagues, these other diplomats who were in hiding for all intents and purposes, they believe that the linking, the, the leaking of General Petraeus um, and, and his, that whole affair debacle was as a direct result of this operation timed to silence him and keep him, at, because bear in mind now, at the time, he was the chief of the CIA. And so this whole thing was designed to, one, silence him, two, to get him out of the public spotlight where he could do any damage to these scum and reveal their true narcissistic exploits, <clears throat> and moreover, to discredit him so that if he did come out and spill the beans, they could point to him and say, uh-uh, uh-uh, that's just tit for tat. We caught him having an affair, and now this is sour grapes. He's just a disgruntled employee. Get it? General Ham, 
who was the head of AFRICOM, he had special operations groups and assets that were in place that have come that could have come to the aid of Benghazi consulate immediately, not in six hours. Remember now, he's already in Africa. Remember that Benghazi is in Africa, in Libya, which is in the northern coast or the northern half of of Africa, right? It's up at the top. And he had assets in place that could have come immediately to the aid of that consulate. According to these diplomats, Ham was told by the White House to stand down and not save or aid these men who were trapped there. Ham went ahead and disobeyed the order and sent the people anyway. Get this quote. The White House, quote, called his deputy and had the deputy threaten to relieve Ham of his command if he didn't step down, stand down. Now, isn't it very interesting that Ham immediately thereafter quietly retired in April of 2013 this year, just two months ago, as the head of AFRICOM? Where was Obama during all of this? Well, we know where he was. He was hiding in the White House because the conversation went something like this. Mr. President, this is a very serious issue that if it ever gets out that we were involved in trading Stinger missiles to the enemy, your entire legacy will be shot down and you'll be impeached. Mr. President, you need to leave the room because you cannot be, you have to be able to give us the plausible deniability to say he was not there, and you have to give yourself the plausible deniability to say honestly to the press, I wasn't there. That's what this was really about. That's why Obama was nowhere to be found. Because he was cowering somewhere right outside that room, And he didn't want to know. When Pfeiffer, who's the White House spokesperson, was asked about where Obama, Obama's whereabouts that night, he says, well, he was kept up to date on the terror a- attack uh, throughout the entire night, from the moment it started until the very end. But when he was pressed over and over and over for more details... He dodged the question, saying only that Obama was, quote, kept up to date with the events as they were happening. He needed plausible deniability to escape the penalty of guilty knowledge. And if there's one thing that Obama is guilty of, it's an awful lot of guilty knowledge. Not just about Benghazi. All these other issues. IRS, the AP, and the Department of Justice's uh, targeting of, of uh, press organizations who didn't toe the line according to the White House rulings. You see, what you have to realize is that... And, and by the way, Pfeiffer <laughs> was on Bob Schieffer the other night and... <laughs> I mean, Bob Schieffer now, who has been an absolute slug in bed with this, with this administration and supported them at every turn, actually turned around and, and, and after Pfeiffer dodged and dodged and dodged and dodged, finally turned around and said to him, why are you even here? Where is the chief of staff of the White House? He's the one who should be answering these questions. But remember, Pfeiffer is kind of like Susan Rice, you see. He can go out there and say anything he wants, and he'll take a hit for the team. The White House Chief of Staff, uh, 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 they can't do that. 
So what they do is they send out these low-level underlings with the promise that, listen, just lie your butt off, lie through your teeth. One way or the other, we're going to take care of you. Make no mistake about it. The intrigue of this thing is far greater than any soap opera you could ever deign to watch. You're listening to America's Voice. We're going to be back in just a moment. This is a Fox News alert. I'm Chris Foster. President Obama is scheduled to speak in a half hour about the devastation in Moore, Oklahoma. A medical examiner's office spokeswoman says they have 24 bodies, victims of a tornado, down from a previously reported death toll of 51, although more are expected to be found. Governor Mary Fallon. We want to make sure that we have looked in every single crevice possible under the debris to make sure that we've recovered people. Fox News Radio affiliate KRMG's Rick Corey in Moore. Right now what they're still trying to work through is seeing if they can find anybody alive here. As you go along, you see the uh, orange X's that are on cars or homes. That means those have been searched. There are no bodies inside. They're continuing to carry around those orange spray cans here. The town had 16 minutes of warning before that tornado touched down. I grabbed my dog and we went to a closet and laid down and Everything just kind of collapsed all around me. At least 120 people taken to area hospitals. This is a Fox News alert. Thanks to Jason over at Wits End Classic Barbershop for sponsoring our phone lines. You can call our Wits End Classic Barbershop hotline and uh, you can get over there and get yourself shaving a haircut. Two bits. Well, a little bit more than two bits. Thanks to our friends over at Pizza Hut as well. On Porter Wagoner Boulevard, they have an outstanding lunch special. And on Tuesday nights, they have Kids Eat Free. Children under 12 eat for free. They're on Porter Wagoner Boulevard in West Plains. Make sure you visit Pizza Hut. Our friends at the Battery Station, 303 Washington Avenue at BatteryStation.com. You can also reach them via telephone at 257-7799. Folks over at West Plains Pawn and Gun. Kenny's a friend of ours and a great supporter of our program. 417-256-3000, located uh, about a mile and a half on Route 160 past Walmart. You can reach him also on the web at westplainspawn.com. Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance, half mile east of Walmart at Route 62 in Mountain Home. You can find them on the web at ozarkmtnselfreliance.com. And you can call them at 870-492-4030. My friend Mary over at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery, the best damn bakery in 100 miles. She can be reached at 417-255-2253. You can also find her at number 2 Evans Arcade. Outstanding Bakery. Bill Stone over at Stone Construction at 2930116. Whether remodeling, building new, or doing some kind of custom construction, light like commercial or farm work, Bill's the guy for you. 2930116. SAH Printing at 204 Porter Wagner Boulevard is the best place to get your custom screen printed t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hats for the spring and summer sports seasons. Whether it's baseball, softball, or soccer, whether you're a Zizzer, Hornet, Panther, or Rocket, let SAH Printing make sure your t-shirt game is up to par. Just stop by 204 Porter Wagner Boulevard in West Plains or call 417-257-1642. Weather is a service of News Talk 1071 The Point. Contact Josh or Cody at 255 2548 for more information on making weather sponsorships part of your marketing plans. For the Point Weather Center this morning, showers and thunderstorms, they will become severe as we have today, including the risk of large destructive tornadoes. We'll have to be on the alert for that all day. The highs up to 78. Thunderstorms end tonight with clearing towards daybreak, low 58. Wednesday, sunshine, high 80. I'm meteorologist Jim Minaldi. For more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. Kim Commando, a.k.a. the Digital Goddess, keeps you plugged in with a daily feature. Kim Commando's Digital Minute. This segment keeps you informed with what's going on in the technology world, along with new tips and tricks to use at home to improve those computer skills. Catch Commando at 722 a.m. during Cooper & Company on the Ozarks Best News Talk. If the feature has you craving more, join Kim, the Digital Goddess, Saturdays from noon to 3 on the Ozarks Best News Talk, 1071 The Point. sure that you guys get a chance to get down there and support our friends over at Pizza Hut. They have a great lunch special that you can take advantage of. And uh, on Tuesdays, uh, Tuesday uh, evenings, they have uh, Kids Eat Free Night. So uh, get down there to Pizza Hut and enjoy 
a nice meal with those folks. When you get there, uh, ask for Brie. She's uh, my daughter and a great server there, and I'm sure she'll take very good care of you. Tell her that your her dad sent you. <laughs> That's confusing, isn't it? Um, you know, it, they, they have a great salad bar down there, and I get down there for lunch all the time. And uh, so you can have, you know, a good salad and uh, some pizza that kind of helps improve the rabbit food. <laughs> if you're watching your, uh, what your diet. So, uh, you know, w- what the real issue here is, is that what we have is a betrayal of everything that America stands for. Because this, this administration is bound and determined to create these webs of deceit and intrigue in a national or an international arena or or on a stage that is the creation the creation point of so much anger and mistrust and distrust by the rest of the world no one globally can trust the united states of america any longer they can't trust to keep, uh, trust us to keep a secret. We got leaks everywhere. I mean, let me tell you something. This administration has more leaks than your colander that you strain spaghetti with. I mean, it's unbelievable how many of them are out there. And what's interesting is that they do nothing about it unless that leak points back to them. Then they crush that person like an iron fist on a a mosquito. Really is uh, shameful. I want you to listen for a moment to this interview with Pfeiffer and and Mike, uh, not Mike Wallace, uh, Chris Wallace. (laughs) I guess I just dated myself. This is an interesting discussion because... Chris Wallace is asking uh, Pfeiffer, who is the the White House uh, press sec or the White House uh, uh, spokesperson, and you gotta hear the dodge in this. I mean, it's just utterly amazing to me. Let's turn to to Benghazi, and I want to ask you about one lingering question, which is the president's actions on 9-11, the night of the attack, because we don't know very much about that. We do know that in the afternoon he had an already scheduled meeting with Defense Secretary Panetta, as well as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Martin Dempsey. When he heard about this while they were in the meeting on an unrelated subject, he said that he wanted them to deploy forces as soon as possible. The next time that he shows up is that Hillary Clinton says that she spoke to him at around 10 o'clock that night after the attack at the consulate, not as it turned out at the annex, but the attack at the consulate was had ended. Question, what did the president do the rest of that night to pursue Benghazi? Well, look, the president was kept up to date on this as it was happening throughout the entire night from the moment it started until the very end. And because this is a critically, this this is a horrible tragedy. These are people that he sent uh, abroad whose lives are in risk, people who work for him. And I recognize that there's a series of conspiracy theories that Republicans have been spinning about this since the night it happened. But the, there has been an independent review of this. Congress has held hearings. We provided 250,000 pages of do- 25,000 pages of documents up there. There have been 11 hearings, 20 staff briefings, and everyone has found the same thing. This is a tragedy. And so the question here is not what happened that night. The question is what are we going to do to move forward and ensure that this doesn't happen again? You see, the question is what are we going to do to ensure this doesn't happen again? No, that's not the question. The, with that statement, he's attempting to sweep it all up underneath the rug. The Republicans are throwing out conspiracy theories. This has been looked at. Looked at by who? It's been looked at by one wolf telling the other wolf, I want you to investigate what happened to all those chickens. And after a thorough investigation, the second wolf comes back to the first wolf, who's got blood dripping off his maw, and says, well, I don't know. I guess they all just flew the coop. And the two wolves turn around in unison and look at the sheep and say, guys, I just, uh, we can't explain it. Just one of those things. But we're going to make sure that it never happens again. You see, this is all about what do we got to do to get past this? Let's not get to the bottom of it. 
let's just let's just figure out what we got to do to get past it so that America doesn't really understand the true depth of our depravity. That's really what this is about. Go ahead, caller. Yes, uh, Mike. Good morning. Listen, I you know I watched that thing with uh, uh, Chris Wallace, and 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 I saw underneath there uh, Dan Pfeiffer, senior advisor, and I thought, you know, if that that pig-eyed man is a senior advisor to the president, God help us. And 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 I just, you know, this is. And then what? What they did to the AP what he, is what, not. What, what he actually is is he. Let me tell you something. It, the, his title is immaterial. What right. he really is. What he really is is he is the bait that they Absolutely. throw out there. Okay, uh, just exactly like Susan Rice. Susan Rice was, was the same thing. These yes. people have absolutely nothing to do with government's operations, Benghazi, or any other operation. They are thrown out there to be chewed up and mauled by the press as fodder. They're cannon fodder. Well, and do you have, you know, hey, Mike, you know, the thing is, though, you, I mean, when you have, I mean, this is East German style stuff. They, I mean, they, they, what, they, what they did to the AP pales in, in comparison to what they did with James Rosen of Fox News. Well, uh, and, and there's more of this stuff coming out every day, but... You know, the focus of the Benghazi issue, I'm telling you right now, I'll tell you why it's important to America. And it's more important than the AP story. It's even more important than the IRS story. I'm going to tell you why. By the way, I think all three of them are impeachable offenses. The problem is trying to get to the bottom of them. Right. But here's here's the defining factor. In the case of Benghazi, you can draw a clear, delineated line between this administration and a betrayal and abuse of the authority which has been granted to the presidency as a nation when they are arming the enemy, a declared enemy who we've spent a trillion dollars in an attempt to defeat, unsuccessfully, I might add. And so here's the difference. You see, uh, impeachment is based on uh, bribery, High crimes and misdemeanors or treason. Right. Right? Well, bribery is pretty much out. Treason, on the other hand, is not. And high crimes and misdemeanors are defined by crimes that that high crime doesn't mean big crime. High crime means a crime that you can only accomplish because you're in a high position of authority. And you've abused that authority. You've misused that trust. That's what defines a high crime. And a misdemeanor is perjury. I mean, they got Clinton with it. The difference between Clinton and Obama uh, in terms of an impeachment issue is that Clinton, you know, he, he, lied, he lied about having an affair in the White House, which threw questions and, and, and intimated into his trustworthiness as a president. Right. This is something completely different. Here you've, got a, and, and, and here you've got a president. Opinion. Here you've got a president that has actually been involved in the direct arming of the enemy. Well, let me say one thing that 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 you know it doesn't ma- the timeline, which I thought was very interesting on, with General Ham, but it didn't matter whether they could have gotten there in four hours, seven hours, seventeen hours. What we didn't know at the time before we before we put those people or should have put those people uh, to task. Uh, we didn't know how long it was going to last. So the timeline makes no difference. Right. Other than, it, you know... Uh, I mean, right. It's, it only, it's only 2020 vision that tells us that the timeline matters. Because right. the truth is, the thing could have gone on for five days and nobody would have... That's would've... exactly right. And, and, and one other thing that people need to realize, because you impeach a man does not mean he is removed from office, and we need to be calling for something more stringent than just impeachment. Well, okay, but you have to start there. Yeah, that's where you have to start. I mean, from a political perspective, look, I, 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 vote, for, I vote for storming Washington with 10 or 25 million Americans who literally go there and sit down and say, we're not leaving until all of you do. And by the way, all of you and all of your aides and all of your assistants and all of your staffs 
are permanently ever barred from running for office again, and the only people that will be allowed to run will be citizen legislators who have no political experience what whatsoever. I'd like for you, will you tell me where I can look up the Greenland, or was it Iceland? I can't remember. Iceland. But, uh, Just go in there and type in Iceland and what they did. Iceland, okay. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's the most interesting, the, that, that's a very interesting story. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead and you do so your homework much, on it. I encourage you to. I, not to worry, uh, and I thank you very kindly, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. The real issue here, folks, is that our government is, uh, for all intents and purposes, so out of control that, you know, even impeachment doesn't mean the end of the of the tyranny. And, and I think that was the caller's point. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to America's Voice now. My name is Michael Evans. I'll be with you for the last segment of the show. America's Voice Now, delivering truth over mainstream propaganda every single day. Hi, my name is Michael Evans, and I'm your host, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., and Saturday morning from 6 to 9 a.m. Join me daily for important guests and my unique slant on hot topics in the news. Visit americasvoicenow.org for even more news, articles, and commentary, and watch our show streaming live to your PC. Share your morning with me. Get educated, informed, motivated, and activated. America's Voice Now, right here on 107.1. Hi, it's Hugh Hewitt on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. The next governor of Virginia, Ken Cuccinelli. The current senator from South Dakota, John Thune. I'll also be joined by Bill Kristol. And we'll talk with all of them about immigration reform and what is ahead in the United States Senate and Marco Rubio. Don't miss any minute of the next Hugh Hewitt Show. Sundays from 6 till 7, following Money Talk with Bob Brinker, it's the Weekend Journal with Hugh Hewitt on the Ozarks Best News Talk 107.1. Last time. On the Dennis Miller Show. If the default position for the most powerful man in the world is, hey, I was clueless on all this, you can shake your head. You can say, my God, that seems unbelievable. But you can't continue to go after him when he says he's clueless. He sort of tamps it down and stops it before it gets off the pad. If he says, yeah, I was behind this, then you got problems. So he's a genius. And Weekdays from 9 till noon is the Dennis Miller Zone on the Ozarks Best News Talk 107.1. Out of 365 days a year, we celebrate holidays, anniversaries, and other important days. But there is one day you look forward to, your birthday. I wanna, wanna wish you a happy birthday. Ryan Steakhouse of West Plains is proud to bring you the Birthday Club weekday mornings with Cooper and Company. Company. Our daily winner receives one buffet and a drink to Ryan. Just call cha-cha. your birthdays in weekday mornings with Cooper, Cooper and Company. Company at 255 Brought to you by Ryan's and the Ozark's Best News Talk. And happy birthday to you. cha cha, cha. You see, what's really important here in this entire debacle is the way in which they couch things. And I'm going to draw a correlation for you that I want you to remember going forward. Every time you hear the phrase, what's important here is that, we're, uh, is that we are going to move forward to ensure this doesn't happen again. So just listen to this theory for a moment. Listen to this correlation between it and what happens to you when you've done wrong. You go into a court and the prosecutor has you up on trial there for whatever whatever it is that they want to try to trammel you with. And never, never do you hear the court say, the question here is not what happened that night. The question is, what are we going to do to move forward ensuring that it doesn't happen again? That's never stated in a court. You know why? Because the question is, what happened that night? Did you commit the crime? What did you do? When? How? Why? Where? With whom? Against whom? That is the question. In fact, that's the only question question. So when you hear psychophants like this Pfeiffer come out here and try to protect and defend this type of behavior, these types of actions by this traitor, or series of traitors actually, the question is what happened that night. The question is not what do we have to do to move forward and ensure this doesn't happen again. If that was the question that was ever asked in a court of law against a citizen, the jails would be empty. 
wouldn't they? What's important here is the way in which they attempt to mislead you. And you'll hear this phrase from politicians all the time. The question is, what are we going to do to move forward to ensure this doesn't happen again? Over and over and over. They're saying it about the IRS. They're saying it about Benghazi. They're saying it about the AP phone scam. They're saying it about Mitch, about Rosen from Fox News. They're saying it over and over and over. What's important is we have to make sure that this doesn't happen again. No, what's important is we have to make sure that we get to the bottom of what actually did happen, who's responsible for it, what they did, and what do we need to do to make sure that they're wearing pretty silver bracelets. That's what's really important. You know why? Because we can't move forward until we do know. We can't move forward and ensure this doesn't happen again unless the perpetrators who are responsible for the crime are brought to justice. Fifty thousand pages of doc- twenty-five thousand pages of documents up there. There have been eleven hearings, twenty staff briefings, and everyone has found the same thing. This is a tragedy. And so the question here is not what happened that night. The question is what are we going to do to move forward and ensure that this doesn't happen again? That's why Congress. The question here is not what happened that night. The question is what are we going to do to move forward and ensure that this doesn't happen again? The question here is not what happened that night. The question is what are we going to do to move forward and ensure that this doesn't happen again? The question here is not what happened that night. The question is what are we going to do to move forward and ensure that this doesn't happen again? No, it isn't. The question is, what happened that night? The question is, where was this president? The question is, what did he know? The question is, who was Hillary Clinton conspiring with and consorting with? The question is, how deeply did the president know about it? The question is, what was the real culpability issue behind Benghazi? The question is, how much did Stevens know? The question is, what arms were they trading to the enemy? The questions are... Not what are we going to do, do to move forward to ensure this doesn't happen again. The question is, who's responsible for this betrayal and treason so that we can bring them to justice? That's how we ensure that it doesn't happen again. We ensure it doesn't happen again by removing the players. That's what they do with you. That's what the court does with you. It removes you from the scene. So you cannot commit the same crime again. But these people act with impunity. In fact, they act with immunity. Because they have psychophantic liars like Pfeiffer who go out there and tell the American people... The question here is not what happened that night. The question here is, what are we going to do to move forward to ensure this doesn't happen again? Well, the first thing that we're going to do to move forward and make sure that this doesn't happen again is we're going to get to the absolute truth of the matter. We're not going to play political games with this. We're going to find out who knew what and where and when and how and why. The first question of every journalist The first question of every prosecutor, or should be, the first question of every judge, and the first question of every jury. And when we know what happened, and who participated in what, and how, and what they knew, then and only then can we bring those guilty to the hall of justice and ensure that this will never happen again. Because we remove the players from the scene. We take them off the stage. That's how you get action results. You remove the players from the scene so that they cannot consistently continue to betray the trust, the authority, and abuse the power that they've been delegated. We've entrusted them with power. They've abused that authority. They've abused that trust. They've abused the fiduciary responsibility that they have to you and me as American citizens. We've given them a power of attorney to act on our behalf. 
But when you give your attorney a power of attorney and you say to him, I, I expect that I'm going to give you this authority for a clear and specific purpose, that person has an obligation to use that power in a way that is beneficial to you. But he doesn't have a right to go out there and borrow your money and go out there and cut an arms deal with your enemy. He doesn't. She doesn't. What the president did that night is desperately critical to the full factual aspects of what occurred that night. It is critical. It is mission critical. Where the president was, who was he talking to, what did those reports contain, who told him what, what did he say back to them, what authority did he give, what authority was used, what orders did he give, and were they followed? All of it matters. Every last word. Was he in the Situation Room? He was kept up throughout the day. Do you know whether he was in the Situation Room? I don't remember what room the President was in that night. And that's a largely irrelevant fact. No, it is not, son. That's not an irrelevant fact. If he was sitting there in the Situation Room and he was aware of all the goings-on, it matters big time. I don't remember what room the president was in that night. Well, let me tell you something. The White House is so closely controlled that for all intents and purposes, Obama's got somebody walking around with a pad and pen who's recording his every move. They record what time he has a bowel movement. So let's not make any assertions here that somebody doesn't know where the president is at all times. The president is monitored 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The guy can't blow his nose without somebody standing there with a box of tissues. So to assert that nobody knows where he was during this seven or eight or 12 hour period? Oh, please. That's like a mother saying, before she gives birth, I'm not really sure where my baby is. But you see, the game here is afoot to trick you and to get you to think. See, most people hear this and they don't utilize their critical thinking skills. I'm pulling this conversation apart today because I want you to learn the skills and the talents that it takes to do this to everything that you hear. Every time you hear this type of excuse, protective nonsense, you have an obligation to take it apart and use the critical thinking skills, the reasoning skills that God and nature have given you, and make and determine your own outcome. You don't have to be some kind of philosopher or scholar to understand that what this is, is BS, HS, and CS. Horse, chicken, and bull. I'll let you fill in the last word. It's all three. Our jobs is to make sure that we are not fooled or talked into complacency or apathy by scum and liars like this. Or scum and liars like higher up, like their bosses who are sending them out there to be sacrificial animals on the altar of media. You're listening to America's Voice. Please find us on the web at facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now, youtube.com forward slash America's Voice Now, where you can find this and every other show that we do. And when we hit one that strikes your funny bone, send it to your friends. We are the Ozark's best news talk, KBMV Birch Tree. News.
News Radio. I'm Dave Anthony. The misery spread.